Hi everybody, my name is Katrina Gray and we are talking today with Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Beat. Hey everyone, I have the absolute privilege and delight of the company of Katrina Gray today. So hello again, Katrina. Hi everybody. <laughs> it's great to have you on. I know we've uh, it's been a labour of love to try and get us at the right time to get to get us back here with all the my um, it's not your side it was my all my cancellations and my having to put things off. So I appreciate your patience. Uh, very very patient. And I'm glad to be on your podcast. I really appreciate it as well. No, this is great. Thank you. I, it's fantastic. So yeah, as I say. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I know you've been busy. I've got a few questions for you, but uh, they're all going to, some of them will obviously centre around what you're doing at the moment because we are Facebook friends. And so I, I do follow your posts and see, see that you yeah. are you're extremely busy, as in today. I don't think you've stopped today either. It's been a crazy day. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, it's good to finally sort of, yeah, to sort of get to chat to you um, at a time when you're, you're not running around. <laughs> or, or filming or working. <laughs> um, I, I love to have you know busy days and a lot of auditions and stuff. So it's what I live for. But um, in the same time, it's crazy. But I like the crazy, you know. So. Exactly, exactly. I was going to say it's actually a good thing that you're so busy. Um, cause it, <laughs> I'm very happy. I'm very happy for that. <laughs> There's so many times. I mean, you know, I mean, acting. I mean, the amount of people I speak to and, and acting is that's why I I'm still. An IT project manager at the moment because I'm I I want to get back into acting. I did a film last year, and I really I'm trying to that's help part of this why I do this is to, so I can learn from your expertise and things and try and, and 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 get myself back into it. But yeah, it's the fact that yeah, it's it's the fact that I'm I've got to pay the rent, so <laughs> I know that I'm not good. So you know, unlike you guys who can you know it's it's a, it's a lot of hard work, and I've just I just there's that little tiny bit of me that clings on. <laughs> pursue your passion yeah it's kind of why I do the podcast at the moment and that's that's that keeps me there until I can sort of move over but uh, yeah there's all this is the self-doubt there's a little tiny bit of self-doubt or a lot of self-doubt which just clings and ties me back um, from going anywhere and that's something which I admire in all you guys because even though you I know from speaking there there is everyone has that self-doubt but you still push forward because it's the passion that pushes you yeah, yeah. Uh, if if not that, then I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. So when when did you start to realize you wanted to go into the entertainment industry? When did I start to realize that? Huh. Uh, I think since I literally was born, because um, even my parents they were calling me, "Oh, you are our little actress." Because I was doing theater since I was little. I was going to school, but in my free time, I was like in theater all the time. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, going to all these dancing classes, classes, uh, singing classes, and just always something with entertainment. And uh, basically, as my life went, you know, continued, went on, um, it was just more and more, and uh, later on, photo shoots, and then commercials, and then movies. So, yeah, basically, all my life. Fantastic. That is, I mean, that was the question I was going to have. Is have you done theatre work as well? Because I was like reading upon your your resume, which is pretty impressive, uh, to be fair. But yeah, I was just, so you did a lot of theatre when you were younger. Well, I did, but when I was like very little. Right. Went, okay. Uh, and I stopped when I was in high school. Uh, when I moved to Mexico, mm -hmm. it was the last time I did theatre was in uh, in Mexico. In Cats. I was doing musicals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And uh, so uh, that was the last time. And uh, since then, I was just working on commercials, and uh, I've been doing some modeling. That was, mm -hmm. you know, it kept that kept me going, especially at the beginning. Yeah. And you know, modeling pays well, the bills. Mm -hmm. and at the same time, I could get my portfolio and uh, work on stuff I love. So um, I've been doing that, but I don't call myself a model because uh, what I was doing in my free time, I was writing and I was basically preparing my own things. So, um, uh, yeah, sorry for that. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, yeah, so basically the theater was in, last time in high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that, when I was very little. 
All right, okay, fair enough. Would you like to do theatre again? Um, not uh, really. I mean, <laughs> I love theatre, but um, I think I already tasted the movie, and then all I really know, all I really am is the movies mm -hmm. and anything that is motion picture. So um, I think I would go that way only. I mean, I would like to do maybe sometimes but um, not like a full time definitely because I it's very time consuming and you just can't do both things that's the truth you just can't yeah so it's my choice yeah no that's fair enough has to, uh, I guess it has to be one of the other I know that's um again because so, I've talked to quite a few actors and actresses and, and some of them do theatre as well but I know when they do theatre they sometimes have to cancel their appearances at the theatre because they land themselves a, a, a good tv or film role and yeah and not good it's not very <laughs> like if you want to do movies you have to do only movies yeah and do uh if you want to do theater you have to just do just that because it's uh the worst thing that can happen worst thing that you can do is to cancel on somebody like everything what i'm doing in uh, everything i was doing until now is like to make sure i don't cancel anything if i say yes to something i'm doing it no matter what you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah that that's um big majority of being professional that's what people call professional exactly, when, exactly yeah pick your word and be on time be ready you know and then you you do what one or another yeah no and so and um, you know that's i i, I can relate that from mine because i contract out and i really don't currently well no one's going to listen from my work but it's not the kind of i'm really not kind of liking where i am but i've signed a contract at a certain time so again i'm rather than just drop people in it um you know I, i'd stay till the end of the contracted time and then and that's i think that's you know a lot of the time you do that with the theater i mean i've got to say the people who've been on i think it's only once it might have happened or <laughs> you know it's not very often because you're right it is very unprofessional it gives you a bad name as well because yeah, even definitely. though even if it's theater it still gets around that there's other people in there and the other actors will be let down that like you've let everybody down so i can you know it's an honorable thing to to choose yeah. the one and not the other lucky even to get a good theater play so it's the same like when you get good movie Re exactly the same exactly you know and it, it, it all goes hand in hand i used to do theater as well when i was until i was about 17 or 18 uh, mm. i loved it um pantomime dame and musicals as well but uh nowhere near the professional stand <laughs> i'll just say it that way <laughs> have, you got, fine. have you got a little budgie or something a little bird in there in your room i got two <laughs> bring in and out so <laughs> <laughs> I could hear the little tweeting as well. that brought from Thailand I was living there for past five years mm -hmm. and uh, they came with Thailand <laughs> here oh. they are little cutie poms <laughs> pick up Pomeranians oh lovely <laughs> yeah so, so I could hear them, hear them in the back so. <laughs> yeah it's cool uh, we've just got some rats at ours as well we've got two cats and two rats now <laughs> Oh, nice. Yeah, I've just, found, I've just found out rats laugh when you tickle them as well. Oh. It, you can't hear it, apparently, but they, they, they sit and squirm, and if you and then they come back for more. So, so they like <laughs> They actually like it, yeah. The scientists tried it. In general, so, you know, they're cute. That's so cute. So they, they come for belly rub. Yeah, they come. They, they like their back tickle, so you tickle their back. I think I watched a video and it was a scientist. Sorry, I just take the conversation away. A scientist was tickling them. He had the he had the audio on something different, and um, he he actually because we can't hear it, but then the, you could hear you could hear the noises, the little rat squeaks as they oh. actually really enjoy. And he took his hand away, and the rat was looking all around trying to find out where the hand went. <laughs> and and when it come when he when the guy came back in the room, the rat started giggling again. It started Aww. making the same noises because it it, rec it realized that it was going to get tickled, so it already like like just like we do, you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we know it's coming, so we laugh. Magical creatures. Oh, they are. They are. Um, cool. So, I mean, as I said before, you've got an impressive resume as well. You, I mean, you've done music videos, TV films, and you've done film shorts as well. So, one yes. thing I want to know is the difference between how you find film in a short. Uh, compared to a feature, because you've got to pack. I mean, I've, I've spoke, you know, I've seen quite a lot of shorts. So it's fantastic, but you've got to pack so much more of your character and put more across on the screen. And in, in what third of the time of a feature film? So how do you find that? Mm, 
I mean, I've been in a few shorts, but they were like really short, like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say it's a, uh, it's, it's very challenging to portray character in such a short time. Mm -hmm. It does. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing. I mean, uh, short is still. It's like a feature film, yeah. but just a very short version of it. So I would say it's just a very. Um, for me, shorter a short film would mean like a good montage of good scenes for, taken out of the context. Something that if you create, and you could develop it and you know you put some scenes before some scenes after some scenes after so it doesn't necessarily have to be a uh, difference it can be the same thing mm -hmm. it's just a little piece of feature film okay so it necessarily has to have a beginning and end when it comes to feature film mm -hmm. oh short film. Short, yeah. yes okay no that's great you're, you're right i mean i've uh, there's some great shorts i've seen recently as well and yeah you're right they just it's like a piece of the piece. Of the, yeah, piece of the film, and um, but but they are so powerful, uh, and I think you can put so much, yeah, just in that what 10, 15, 20 minutes, there's, there's so much emotion can be pushed through, yeah, which you just like bombarded with. I, I I will not lie, I out the, out of the Cannes Film Festival about two weeks ago, um, I had the honor of giving an award out, but the film which won it, um, it was it was, it was it, I actually it was only. 20 minutes long but I was in floods of tears because <laughs> I actually related oh. it was about um, it's actually about depression and stuff so for me it kind of rang a lot of home it rang true and I was just sat there sniffling in the cinema afterwards and I said I just I actually gave the awards that was the one which, which won um, oh. but I gave the award to them and it was just it was yeah I just love anything even a feature film because I was quite a lot of feature films I'll sit and do that because I'm I'm not the typical bloke I'm, I'm quite soft so I get quite you know work I, I really get into stuff so yeah it was um yeah shorts I think when they do that you can pack so much power into them yeah some certain movies influence me a lot uh I cry all the time and I'm not even hiding I just like <laughs> anywhere where anytime any place really yeah fair enough <laughs> Well, no, so, so, so it's, it's always a good thing. It's good to, good to let it out. But um, yeah, you're right. It's uh, this, even the cinemas, yeah, videos. With, you know, it's great. What kind of films have inspired you then? Because I know you're a writer as well, which we'll get on to. So, okay. yeah, what kind so, of? I'm really. I mean, I love any movie, if it's whether it's bad or good. I mm -hmm. don't care because in everything I find something inspirational. Because that's why people do it. Like you know, there's. You can't say the movie is bad. The movie is what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. There was always some be idea behind it. But, I mean, for me, uh, the, what I love the most are the horror films, sci-fi, mm -hmm. zombie movies. I saw, like, every zombie movie. All, <laughs> all the horror movies. And um, sci-fi. Lots of sci-fi thrillers and uh, fantasy. So, uh, if I... You know, I could mention lots of movies that influenced me, but I think growing up, uh, it would be uh, the, the the tales from the crypt, or oh, yeah. Alpha, or Acta uh, Acta, not X. Um, how you call it? X Files. Files. Yeah, yeah. I know them as Acta X as well from when I was in Germany. So. Yeah, Acta X. We call it Acta X. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. You know, and similar, you know, I, I really, I believe in, you know, extraterrestrial and all mm -hmm. this stuff, so energy and so anything with the normal as well. So I'm, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Exactly the same taste as me, but that's great. I mean, the X-Files, I grew up on the X-Files as well yeah. when they first started. Um, I think I was, how old was I? Oh God, about 15, 16, so it shows how old I am. When they first came out, um, so I started watching them, and yeah, I've never looked back, and they're yeah. just absolutely phenomenal series it's, as it's progressed through, and, like and, uh, and the, the making, the filmmaking, if you're looking at that side of things as well, the, the, you know, the, the, the lighting and the production of everything, it's just, they just do it so well. Yeah, I mean, the, these are like, I'm talking about the series, but movies, but you know, lots of uh, very famous movies as well, not only series, but also... I like uh, Stargate. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> passion for action a lot. I love strong female characters. I do action and, um, you know, uh, I love 
<laughs> Excellent. Yeah, no, that's, a good, that's another one. That's a great one. I was supposed to meet them this year, but I didn't. <laughs> they came to London. Did you know that? They were in, only last month in July. A lot of them were in London for a convention. Um, yeah, Sam Carter, Richard Dean Anderson, they were all over. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Oh, I was not here. I was in Thailand shooting. No, oh, right. <laughs> fair enough. Which is probably better because it means you're actually filming. You're actually you're working. So yeah. <laughs> no, that's absolutely great. I was going to say something else then. I can't remember what it was. Oh yeah, that's right. If you we're on Facebook friends because you like zombie movies, I've got Facebook friends and I'll put you in touch if you, with. Oh, what's his name? Romero. George C. Romero. Who's George A. Romero's son? Okay. You know the the father of zombie movies of the Day of the Dead and oh. the Dawn of the Dead, and they're actually they're making a new yeah. one. <laughs> God, yeah. yeah. So he's uh, he's his son. I'm friends with his son on Facebook, and he was going to come on my show. So I'll have, I'll I'll free it up so you can have a look. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I yeah. Because they're making a new one, so you know, get in touch, and you, you might be able to get into it. No. <laughs> Uh, Live your dream. <laughs> yeah, that's the dream. That's the dream. Yeah. <laughs> See, if it, if it was me, I'd end up just being a zombie on the floor in about two seconds of the film. That'll be it. <laughs> the, the corpse. Yeah, the idea when the, you know zombie apocalypse comes, and what will be the first thing you would do? You know, like um, okay, so okay, so the virus is spreading, and then now people are being affected, and then you just don't know. It's like, is it what is it like? if they bite you like what do you do first and you, you still like see and the people are screaming and you see people are dead so you just go and try to save your family and then try to get some you know get to some pla safe place get the car get you know um get some food and guns and this and that so these kind of stories i don't think it never it never it will never get old like even if you make million movies about mm -hmm. how the invasion will come yeah. or how uh, infection will be spreading then that beginning moment, it's always amazing watch. And in different cities, different stories. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it is. I can hear it in your voice. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But I mean, I, I think I'd probably, if I was to play fair, if the zombie apocalypse came, I think for me, I'd be more like Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> Nick Frost. <laughs> so, so hide in a bar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go down. I've actually yeah. met, I, I met Nick Frost last year. And I, he was giving, he's doing his biography and he read a story and I asked him to sign his book and I've got the book and inside the front cover it says, I'll see you down the Winchester. Oh, <laughs> nice. I was like, yeah, <laughs> got to get that one. <laughs> the bar has strong doors and the windows, yeah, I would consider, consider it as well. Yeah. yeah, make sure you've got some guns first and, and baseball bats. and <laughs> very practical behind it, so I'm definitely... You know, it's drinking is still food. You know, beer is food, so why exactly, not? <laughs> it's wheat. <laughs> exactly. Excellent, excellent. So I mean, talking about well, the fact that you've written stuff as well, um, the ones that you've written, daytime nightmare is the one that you're, you you've just finished. If I just saw your Facebook post literally about an hour or so ago when I saw it, yeah. that's that's almost ready to come out now, isn't it? The teaser trailer at least. Uh, well. We uh, we have been shooting the movie since beginning of the April, but I mean mm -hmm. I was I am working on this project since beginning of February, literally every day. Yeah. So the first month uh, was the script, and then second month was pre-production. Third month was the shooting, mm -hmm. and since then, which it was last past three and a half months, I've been working with the editor Michnia Lupan. Uh, from Film Cube Thailand, editing mm -hmm. uh, the movie, and uh, now we um, basically locked the raw editing. Now we are moving to creative part of editing, and uh, uh, after that, like we are going to be doing the tra trailer and teaser, which will come out in about a month. But the movie is going to be finished in uh, December, hopefully, by the oh, end of the year. Fantastic! Right in time for the yeah. <laughs> So it's going to be released in December? Uh, not released, just finished. So first I'm going to go for festivals. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> the, after that, um, re release date is not uh, set yet. All right, no, that's cool. So yeah, I mean, yeah, because that's right, because I think it's about that time. And then all the, yeah, the festivals will start then, won't they? Or they will, mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. Hopefully, uh, I'll keep your fingers crossed that you do really well with that. Thank you so much, <laughs> yeah. Working that, on that's just, every so. Yeah. My hundred percent. 
So I hope it's going to reflect, you know, on the movie. And, uh, I'm sure. Meanwhile, I'm, you know, auditioning myself and uh, doing all, all kinds of things, but um, I'm on it. <laughs> Excellent. I'm sure it will, because I, I, that's something I find a lot in independent is, uh, I mean, you've got the big holly, you, you know, the big blockbusters, but the passion, I love the passion of independent films and things, the work like you do, and the films like this, because I think it show. it's hard to explain, I've said this so many times, I just can never get the right words, when I see something that has had so much passion and so much dedication put in, and it's, because it, it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of hard work, labour and love, um, to get to get a film like this out um, and put it out there for everybody to watch, and I think that comes across so much clearer and so much more than when. You, I mean, I'm not going to say you, you, you'd love to have a Hollywood studio throw millions and millions at you. Um, mm. I think everyone would. But I'm just saying, you know, uh, when when you've got that big, like I don't know, um, with the threat of being sued, something like Avengers or something like that, you know, when they've had all this cash thrown at them they lose sight you lose sight of the um of the actual passion inside it's just all it is is storytelling you know as in yeah script reading you know what i'm trying to go <laughs> but with a film which is because yeah, you're all you're all family you've all you you guys have lived and breathed that for yeah. several months now <laughs> all together but um, on this uh, that was working with me on this project everybody gave it their hundred percent and uh, everything they got like they they did so well that i couldn't pray or you know get better team than everybody involved in a project like you can read about everybody involved i could be naming them one by one by one but on imdb their names will be soon and also in the movie in credit roles like everybody will have yeah. their yeah and i think that's i mean there's one um, lovely lady and her husband who made a film together and they said and this is why i said the passion because i think they had even the actors their budget was so low that during tape, it takes the actors were moving the furniture around and moving oh. and moving the sets and setting sets up. So well, like, definitely, we even had when we were shooting um, on the boat. There were a few of the crew people, uh, crew members were sick, so <laughs> even you know actors holding the clapper and stuff like that. So <laughs> been happening. Everybody was helping literally with everything. Yeah. And that, I think that shows, so that's what I was trying to get at, that, that kind of passion and that kind of f camaraderie when you're actually doing that. Show, it shows much more when you're be, you know, in the end result because everyone is there to, for one thing and make it succeed and you're a family, you, you, know, you end up being a family. And that's, yeah. And, and yeah, we were and we are and definitely with the same people I'm going to work again on my next movie project. Yeah, and that's a great thing because it means you know you will come back and you will all work together again, and that's and it's building that up and 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 having that symbiote relationship with with the different yeah. different people. So, were there anything else funny that happened apart from being people being seasick and sick? Oh, I mean, so many things happened. Um, oh God, um, one time uh, I was using, of course, uh, I was we we had one of the scenes were bloody scenes. Mm -hmm. and Basically, we've got um, wrong blood. There was not a blood that you would use in a movie, but you would use for clothing. So um, that little bit <laughs> was a little problem there. <laughs> it was on the part of my body, which was basically shown later on in the scenes, mm -hmm. which were after. And uh, for continuity wise, I had to be, you know. Um, uh, Try to cover it. I was rubbing my skin so long with alcohol, <laughs> with everything I found, and uh, yeah, eventually it all worked out well. And but um, it's uh, it was a bit scary. <laughs> 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 Didn't like reschedule like completely many days. So. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out well, so. That's good. As long as the end result was good, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Thank God. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Suffering. I mean, I, I say I mentioned. I'm sorry, it's not about I me. Mean, the film I was say, talking about suffering. I did when I did that thing last year. I won't go into it much, but I was lying on the floor for a while on the concrete floor with my hands tied, down, and I and I had to wriggle, and I wriggled that much. I smashed my head on the back of the concrete floor, and I was just like, then I had to carry on lying because obviously the different cameras were taking. Then it's like. Okay, I can't move. I'm I'm in serious pain here, and I'm not. And everyone was laughing and saying, "You're really going for method acting there." <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, "No, yeah, <laughs> I'm just no, I just need <laughs> no." 
<laughs> this isn't acting. I'm seriously in pain. I've got a, <laughs> I do have a lump on the back of my head at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, method acting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, damn it, I should have said that. I could have got a better part next time. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, this is great. And they say things, things things like that happen. It makes it it makes it makes more fun as well for you guys when you're actually doing it. Because not at the time, obviously, but looking back, you can, like you are, with a smile and a laugh. <laughs> um, who would you love to work with? As an actress um, yourself, who would you, what other actor or actress would you love to work with? Who would you... Oh my god, Leonardo DiCaprio, definitely. Who, yeah. sorry? Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, okay. He's uh, one of the best actors. I mean, there are so many great actors. Anthony Hopkins as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't name them. Uh, Will Smith. Oh, uh, yeah. The man who never ages. So many actors, but I think these would be my number three, yeah. Excellent. Anthony Hopkins, uh, he's just phenomenal. He's uh, he's, and he's got a voice as well. There's certain people, I think, certain actors with voices where you can just... Le you just want to listen to him all day long. Yeah. There's him, there's Liam Neeson and Alan Rickman as well. I could listen to Alan Rickman, um, you know, rest in peace. He's, he's a fantastic actor. But yeah, they're, they're, their voices, it is, it's just like you say, you can just... I could watch an entire day of films with those in it just so I could just sit and listen. I've got um, War of the Worlds on my iTunes, which Liam Neeson narrates. Because he just does it so well, it's brilliant. Yeah. It's... yeah. And Leonardo but... DiCaprio, you know, you know, yeah, it goes without saying. The guy is just <laughs> phenomenal. He's just br he really is so versatile. He's done. I know. It's just absolutely amazing. You know uh, how how it took him so long to get an Oscar for what he did. And uh, if I if he was still alive, it would be uh, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Oh, Robin Williams. Yeah. Yeah. He's got it my favorite. My WhatsApp status has got set uh, for it. Actually, I was going to get a tattoo from Dead Poets Society, and it was oh. just going to be the Carpe Diem, seize the day, make your life extraordinary. There was a Bicentural Man mm -hmm. movie. By the yeah. movie. Mm -hmm. by Bicentural by, by Man. Bicentennial Man. What was it? Bicent I, yeah. Yeah. I perhaps it. Oh, what was the real... Um, yeah, so basically did that movie, I just loved that movie. And, mm. you know... I love so, but the way how he portrayed um, a robot that is turning into human who was made, you know, has that capacity, you know, Android, and then eventually, spoiler, he dies, yeah. and I was crying the whole time, you know, <laughs> amazing movie. It is, I mean, and, that, and again, that's someone, I know, is someone who... Again, I knew from, you know, as a, media, as a com comedy actor originally, you know, with all his, the Mork and Mindy, and then, like you say, watching him in Bicentennial Man and Dead Poet Society, Goodwill Hunting, and you could see such a powerful ability to just draw you right in. Because Dead Poet Society, he wasn't the main character. He wasn't in it as, you know, obviously the the, lad, the, the boys were. He was obviously the main character because he was the instigator. But, you know, it was... Um, this, he just stole, you know, it's just, he's stole doing, the show. yeah. No matter what kind of role he had, he was the best. Mm -hmm. he has done. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's and it, it, he was a, it was a big loss for him, a sad loss for him as well. He's just, because uh, he's a uh, phenomenal guy and had so much that he could have given, and he did give, well, he yeah. gave everything, didn't he, really, uh, in the end. <sighs> That's depressing, though. <laughs> <laughs> So let's uh, <laughs> yeah, let's move on again. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you love to be directed by? Um, directed by um, Steven Spielberg, <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, James Gunn, and uh, a few more. Uh, Michael Scorsese, Scorsese, if yeah. <laughs> uh, Ron Howard. Oh, yes, he's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Jackson, the Hobbit movies. Oh, what was his name? Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson, yes. I am actually very bad with names. <laughs> like, I remember four names of my most favorite directors. <laughs> Incredible. I That's really terrible. am impressed by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad with names. I remember faces, so I remember mm -hmm. saw you, but 
I just names are so hard for me to remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm going to leave all that in now, so if people. Are... <laughs> it's a little daily achievement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is to remember the names. No, that's great. Peter Jackson again is. The, the, I mean, all of them. They've got such vision. Um, you know, and look at you know, just look at what they've done. Would you? I was going to say, would you love to star in a Lord of the Rings movie? But who the hell wouldn't? <laughs> definitely. I want to be elf. Yeah. Definitely. I can see okay. you've got the elven features and I, yeah, I did. I feel like I have very straight hair and my even my ear sticks up. <laughs> we have a video. Can you see? Yeah, can I can. See? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, this is proper elf. Yeah. And I see. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's absolutely that. There you go. Oh, I don't even need. You don't even need them. You don't even need prosthetics there. They can just film you and. You... Does my ears. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you've got big ears. I'm just saying that the way they do the way you. The air is very thin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll just clarify that for anyone who's actually listening. That I've not just insulted you. <laughs> no, no worries. All good. All yeah, good. no, no. That'd be great. I think I'd have to be looking the size of me. I'd have to be an orc. <laughs> there are plenty of characters. Yeah, yeah. Or a hob actually, no, I could be a hobbit because um, they're they're quite they're quite round. Cool. <laughs> Hobbit. Hmm? A hobbit fighter. Yeah, a hobbit, a hobbit warrior. Like Frodo. That'd be good. So, awesome, excellent. So, I mean, you've got a lot of other projects on as well at the moment, Katrina, and uh, obviously, you know, the um, Daytime Nightmare is one of them. There's a lot of others. I mean, I'm, I noticed I'm only going to concentrate on 2018 because you have got a great history of the films that you've been in, but this year has been, seems to have been really good for you. <laughs> you've got, you, there's a lot of stuff coming out this year that you've done. And again, it could be that you filmed it three years ago, but it's, it might be coming out this year. Um, what yeah. can you I mean, which just happens, I mean, again, that's uh, quite a few people turn around and I've talked to them about a film. It's like, well, I can't remember. I, it was pretty much like a year and a half ago that it was filmed. It's just taken that long for production, which is yeah. what people don't understand about, you know, I mean, obviously... You're going. We've already discussed with daytime nightmare. Uh, the production side of things take can take a long time when you're produced because you've got to get it right, and um, and people don't see that. I think the audience, they you know, they don't see how much effort and work goes in off camera. Off camera, yeah, yeah. I mean, currently, uh, movie locked up and uh, Ghost House is on Netflix, mm -hmm. and also there is one more movie I worked on called All I See Is You. So yeah, I mean that is now happening, and another another series that I worked on. Uh, it's on Black Pills now, mm -hmm. uh, for the future love, and uh, I was in one of the episodes. It's a sci-fi series. It's great. So whoever has a, a Black Pills app or is planning to get, uh, just download it and uh, you can watch it for free. Mm -hmm. And uh, also a um, series uh, that was shot in Thailand called Eulenia. So mm -hmm. I had a in one of the episodes, it's mini series, so hopefully it will get to Netflix as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, I am now uh, preparing my next project called uh, Hostel Paradise. Mm -hmm. So it's um, also a thriller slash horror uh, shot in Thailand. So that's my next project, hopefully. And I'm gonna work on that hard once I'm done with the uh, Daytime Nightmare. And then I have. Uh, more projects one sci-fi script and uh, one historical one and uh, another thriller so um so a lot more in development that i'm writing myself mm -hmm. than uh, get them you know done because um i really want to give life to all my scripts you know yeah. get them again direct them and direct direct them and uh have a role in in the movie as well excellent that's great i say how many yeah, writing your own stuff as well is, is fantastic. And I'll, I'll just uh, say out if you need someone who's a little extra, when you, if you film in the UK, I'll put my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> or a radio person in the background, you know. Totally. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to pimp myself out like that, you know. It's gonna <laughs> now I'm like literally on it, uh, on Daytime Nightmare. Um, I'm trying to get it out of, you know, yeah. out, get, give a word out. Um, and uh, looking for YouTubers and reviewers and uh, podcasts, TV shows, anybody who would like to, you know, watch the movie and review it, I'm more than happy and welcome anybody who will want to be part of Daytime Nightmare. 
No, that'd be awesome. And I should, I'll, I, I'll obviously tweet out any links um, on Twitter as well, there and pass that. You know, when you've when you've got the trailer and everything ready in a month and things, I'll be able to. I'll, I'll do whatever I can to get that out because I, I I really love to support everyone who I talk to because you know, um, and do what I can. Not that I can do. Not that I'm saying I'm anything big because I'm not. But <laughs> whatever I can to support, I'll I'll always do. So, so that's fantastic. Every support is very very helpful, especially when it comes to independent movie like this. Mm. I'm doing all, everything myself, pre-production, production, post-production. So um, I'm enjoying every bit of it. And the, what drives me and motivates me is that I really want people to see it. And that's one of the things that happens with independent movies. They're being made, but they're not being seen. Yeah. And I want this to happen to Data Nightmare because I put like my heart, my soul in it. And uh, I know that pe- when the people see it, they will love it as love it as much as I do, but I need to get it out there so people can have an access to it. Excellent, excellent. No, that's you're right. That's and it does. It needs to go. Um, and I know there's a huge audience for that kind of genre and that kind of thing out there as well. So I'm sure it will be a huge success. Uh, I say you've already got connections with Netflix as well, so that's quite cool. <laughs> well, very cool, should I say? Not just <laughs> excellent. I'm going to bring you on to my last question now, Katrina. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Sadly, actually, yeah, because I've got this. this uh, I've got phrases for it. Okay, last year I had a guest on my show who has been. He's been in Star Wars, which is quite cool. He was. Do you watch? Do you know? Obviously, you know Star Wars. You're a sci-fi fan. I was going to say. Yeah. Um, but you know, I am the Star Wars freak. Yeah. He was my not same on Skype. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, same, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got that. Yeah, I am a Star Wars fan. <laughs> Excellent. He was nine. Uh, I'm a massive Star Wars fan myself. Absolutely love love it all. But he was nine num. Um, if you remember nine num, the guy in Return of the Jedi, he flew the Millennium Falcon with Lando Calrissian at the end. He's like the, he wears the red suit with the with the blue thing. He's got like a face like a monkey. Yeah, I think I remember. Yeah, he's in all the new ones as well. He's he's the only character who survived all the way through so far. They've not killed him off. Uh, but he was also. He, He's worked with Jim Henson for 30 years. Well, uh-huh. and his son, obviously, uh, and uh, Brian Henson, for The Muppets. And someone asked me this question to ask him. And I, I, I sat there and I thought, it's such a good question. I'm going to ask everybody. Uh, the, so Wait. here we go. So that was a really long-winded way of just saying what the question is. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so if you, could, if you could have a... Uh, yeah. Sorry, Colm. Everybody comes on your podcast right yeah everyone who comes on the show has to answer this question oh, okay. um and i've had some i've had some great answers and uh have you heard, clayne crawford who played Riggs on the lethal weapon tv show he actually he's been on twice and he had two different answers each time and he gave an impression as well which was even better uh, <laughs> okay so i'm not gonna ask you to do one so if you could have a muppet created after you muppet a muppet mm-hmm. what muppet would it be and why you mean like... The Muppets, like Miss Piggy and Kermit and that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little more explanation here, so I know I understand the question. Okay. The Muppet, we're talking about the sci-fi character. Yep, um, it could be, yeah. Yeah, the, you know, the little puppet Muppets like Kermit and Miss Piggy. Do you know them? No. Oh, you don't know them? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No. Oh, so what, oh right, okay. Um, could, yeah, hang on, I'll, try, I'll bring... Yeah, no, not to answer your question, oh my god. <laughs> I know, this is shocking. This is this has never happened before. Or <laughs> what? I wonder if it's called something... Hang on, I'll see if it's... You, you might recognise the... Here we go. I'll hold this up to the... See? Maybe you can... Should... Yeah, do you not recognise him? Oh my god. No? I mean, I saw... <laughs> I mean, I... Really, I, mean, I think I saw it somewhere, maybe on Facebook. But yeah. I, I mean, that's TV show. It is, yeah. It's, it's been going for thirty odd years. It's uh, oh, this is this is this is a, this is shocking, Katrina. Listen, oh <laughs> <my> gonna... <laughs> okay. since you showed me the green one, but I don't know the characters. Um, uh, oh, sorry, then. <laughs> but you can. What you can, what we can do here, if you want, you want, you can change it to. Something else? Something yeah, else. something like a. If you could have any. Since you're into, we'll do sci fi. Then, if you're, into, if you're into any sci fi creature or anything like that. Have you seen Labyrinth? 
Labyrinth with David Bowie, the one where she goes and goes through the big maze. No. Okay. I'm showing oh. my age. Okay. <laughs> All right. If you could have any Star Wars character, if you could be any, if you could be any Star Wars character, who would you be? Princess Leia. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Leia, of course, yeah. <laughs> the most badass woman in the galaxy. <laughs> He's all powerful, strong, sexy, you know, desirable, and very, inf you know, she influences people and she's good and she helps, but she fights, you know. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm shocked about the Muppets. But, <laughs> no, everything is, you know, it's a good thing maybe because it's different, you know. You always it is, yeah. Well, it is actually, yeah, because I normally hear the same sort of things a lot of the time. A lot of the time, uh, uh, and it saves me from having to do my. Actually, I'll do my Yoda for you because if I did my Kermit impression, it wouldn't work because um, you wouldn't know who he was. <laughs> I, uh, no, I never. Uh, so, so my Yoda. Uh, hang on, I've got to get my voice right for this. <clears throat> when nine hundred years old, you reach look as good. You will not. <laughs> That's okay. My Yoda. That's Sounds not as good. My throat's a bit dry, so I couldn't. <laughs> Sounds very interesting, yeah. <clears throat> That's Yoda. That's Star Wars. Oh. <laughs> Didn't work right. very well. My throat's dry, so, yeah. <laughs> Anticlimax. Uh, before I stop recording, is there anything you would like to say to people? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, I would really appreciate all your support. Um, you can follow us on uh, Facebook. Uh, the fan page is Daytime Nightmare. Also, um, I am on Twitter, Katrina underscore Gray. On Instagram, Katrina underscore Gray. And also on Facebook, Katrina Gray. And uh, my website, also Katrina Gray. But um, I would really appreciate every... Um, uh, like on our post on Daytime Nightmare on Facebook, any sharing, and uh, soon I'm going to share a trailer, so stay tuned, and uh, please uh, have a look, and if you like it or have it or not like it, feel free to give any comment. I'm happy for every kind of criticism. Or like. <laughs> Thank you so much.